Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 29 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case of a balloon uncrossable lesion that was complicated by microcatheter tip fracture. The patient presented with stable angina. He had multiple PCIs in the circumflex, ramus, uh, RCA, and the LAD. And diagnostic coronary angiography demonstrated uh, a severe lesion in the origin of the circumflex, right distal to uh, the large ramus branch that have uh, previously been standard. There was no significant disease in the LADs with um, an intermediate lesion and the right coronary artery also did not have significant disease. Therefore, the plan was to treat the osteal circumflex. We had significant difficulty wiring with the workhorse guide wire, but eventually we were able to wire with the field LFC. However, we could not then advance any small balloon through that proximal circumflex lesion. This is an algorithm for the situation when a, a wire crosses but a balloon won't cross. The usual strategy is to inflate a small balloon, 1, 2, 2, 1, 5. Now we actually have the 1.0 um, balloons that um, can be even more useful. If it doesn't work, we can do grenadoplasty to modify the plaque, use a microcatheter, use uh, more support with an extension of a guide catheter or an anchor technique. If this doesn't work, use laser, rotablator, and eventually use subintimal techniques. In this particular case, we could not get a threader, we could not get a small balloon. We tried to get a twin pass to advance a second wire, but this was not successful, and we thought about doing a thorectomy, and we advanced the caravel to exchange the field LFC wire for a thorectomy wire. However, you could not advance it much past the proximal uh, part of the lesion, even when using a side branch anchoring in an attempt to advance the microcatheter. And unfortunately, when we tried to remove the caravel, there was um, a snap and the caravel came back. However, the tip remained inside the vessel. So we had a fracture of the tip of the caravel microcatheter that is staying into the vessel. And that happened even though we did not twist it, but likely because of the significant disease at the ostium of the circumflex. When something like this happens and a piece of equipment is now finding itself in an unplanned territory, so we have something lost on and trapped, in this case a microcatheter tip, there are two ways to deal with this. One is to try to retrieve it, or what can also be done is to not retrieve it, but instead try to get a wire around it, and uh, if it's a stand, deploy it, or otherwise put a stand and cover that um, entrapped uh, or lost um, uh, device. So in this particular case, uh, we were able to advance a second guide wire uh, in the circumflex and then did multiple dilations with a 2.0 and 2.5 millimeter balloons. And to our surprise, after doing that, we were actually able to retrieve the tip of the caravel catheter all the way back into the guide catheter. We actually had the guide catheter extension all the way to the proximal circumflex and we were then able to retrieve uh, the tip of the microcatheter. And to our surprise, after rewiring, we were able to easily advance a balloon, easily advance a stent, and obtain a nice final result without any further complications. Retrospectively, what happened was likely the result of wiring under stent struts. There was an old stent in the proximal circumflex. There was actually also a stent into the ramus. And it is possible that the initial guide wire went under the struts of either the circumflex stent or the ramus stent. And possibly that is why we could not advance equipment. And that is why we had the fracture of the microcatheter tip. So the take home message might be that in cases when things don't advance after wiring through a previous stent, the first step would be to remove the guide wire and then rewire, ideally forming a knuckle or a loop at the tip of the wire. By doing that, one minimizes the chance of the guide wire entering under the pre-existing stand struts. If uh, there is a balloon uncrossable lesion, it's also important to have an algorithm, starting with small balloons, extra support, laser, atherectomy, as described before. Also, that provides some useful lessons about how to deal with equipment loss and entrapment. 
there are two options. One is to retrieve. The other option is to actually deploy your crash. And in this particular case, we ended up retrieving it. But our initial plan was to crash it with another stand, which can be faster and more efficient and sometimes safer than attempts to retrieve it. Thank you.